In today's video, I'm going to be sharing with you the best five foods for weight loss. Now, I really want to stress that the foods that are best for weight loss are not those that are lowest in calories. This is a huge misconception that leads to people having low energy, feeling miserable, binging, and ultimately giving up on their weight loss efforts. If you have weight loss goals, eating the foods that we talk about today in this video will not only help you lose weight faster, but it will also help you maintain your results. A lot of the clients that I work with are looking to lose fat and they see tremendous results focusing their diet around the foods we are going to talk about today. In this video, I'm going to give you the best five foods you can eat to lose weight. Today, we are going to be talking about the best foods for weight loss. A lot of what we're talking about today is based around protein to energy ratio. This is a framework created by Dr. Ted Nyman. The thinking is that the amount of energy, carbohydrates and fat that humans consume is inversely related to the protein percentage in the foods they are eating. And this is because humans have a very high protein satiety drive. We will keep eating until our protein and nutrient requirements are met. When you eat foods that are high in protein in comparison to energy, it is hard to overeat. On the flip side, when you eat foods that are low in protein and high in energy, you end up overeating. And this is why we are currently in the middle of an obesity epidemic. So much of the food we eat today that we are told is healthy is high in energy and low in protein, which leads to overeating and excess energy being stored as fat. Because at the end of the day, the energy we consume, so that's both carbohydrates and fat, can either be used immediately for energy or stored for later. So any excess energy that we are consuming is being stored. The other part to this is nutrients help with satiety. If you eat a diet that is nutrient poor, you're probably going to find you're constantly hungry as your body is begging for nutrients it is missing out on. But with that, let's get into the list. And make sure to stick around until the end of the video because I'm gonna be sharing with you the three worst foods for weight loss. And I think number three might surprise you. Number one is eggs. If you watched my video on the top nutrient dense foods, eggs also made that list as well. Egg yolks are rich in vitamins and minerals. They're rich in B vitamins and also fat soluble vitamins a, D, E, and especially vitamin K2. And the egg whites are almost pure protein. Both of these factors together, the high protein and the high nutritional value, make them ideal for weight loss. One study done on 30 overweight women where participants ate one of two breakfasts, both of equal calories, concluded, compared to the bagel-based breakfast, the egg breakfast induced greater satiety and significantly reduced short-term food intake. Eggs are also extremely accessible and usually very affordable, no matter where you live in the world. Number two is salmon. Again, salmon is packed with protein and packed with nutrients. Salmon and seafood in general are one of the best sources of iodine. Most people nowadays are not getting enough iodine. And one of the consequences of this is thyroid dysfunction. Iodine is required for thyroid hormone to be created. So if you are not getting enough iodine, then your body will not create enough of this hormone. And if you have hypothyroidism, I am sure you are aware that this makes it difficult to lose weight. Making sure your thyroid is functioning properly is super important. Eating foods rich in iodine, such as salmon, can help you ensure you are getting enough. If you want to know more about iodine deficiency and the importance of iodine, I have a whole video on the topic that you can check out after. Number three is butter and ghee. Now this does go against the protein to energy ratio, but hear me out because these foods do have a place. In order for our bodies to use stored body fat, insulin needs to be low. 
Insulin is a hormone that is responsible for transporting glucose to our cells. Whenever we eat, insulin is released, but some foods stimulate insulin more than others. Now, this in and of itself is not a bad thing, but where it becomes a problem is when we are constantly eating throughout the day, meaning insulin is always high, and this leads to insulin resistance. When we are insulin resistant, it is very hard to lose weight. And this is important for all of us to know because one out of three people in the Western world is thought to be insulin resistant, with a lot of those people being undiagnosed. So what I'm getting at here is that reversing insulin resistance is super important for weight loss. And the best way to do this is to eat less frequently. So that means not snacking in between meals and potentially practicing intermittent fasting. Intermittent fasting is when we cycle between periods of fasting and eating. So you are not eating for generally 12 to 18 hours every day. This may sound really overwhelming at first if you are someone who eats late into the evening and first thing when you wake up, but butter and ghee can make getting started with intermittent fasting easier. The way to reverse insulin resistance is to keep your insulin low as often as you can. Butter and ghee score very low on the insulin index. They only raise it a tiny amount. So what a lot of people like to do who find intermittent fasting tough is a variation called bulletproof fasting, which means that in the morning you can drink a cup of coffee or other hot drink with butter or ghee in it. The high fat content keeps you full for several hours and the butter does not raise your insulin. Consuming a coffee or other drink like this helps you push your first real meal until later in the day, usually around midday. So you can reap the benefits of intermittent fasting, but it's a little bit easier to stick to, especially in the beginning. Number four is oysters. Now, this is one you might not have expected to see on this list, but I had to give oysters a shout out because of their amazing nutritional profile, especially when it comes to zinc. A serve of eight oysters has over six times the daily value for zinc. Zinc is an essential component for over 300 enzymes that synthesize protein, fat, and carbs, and therefore is important to keep the metabolism running properly. Like iodine, zinc is also required to create thyroid hormone. A study published in 2013 in Biological Trace Element Research reported that obese individuals tend to have low levels of circulating zinc in their bodies. And other studies have shown that supplementing zinc can accelerate weight loss. Number five is beef. And of course, I had to include beef on this list. Now, beef gets a bad rep because it is thought that red meat increases your disease risk but this is simply not true. In June 2020, the Journal of American College of Cardiology published a meta-analysis where they concluded, most recent meta-analysis of randomized control trials and observational studies found no beneficial effects of reducing saturated fatty acid intake in cardiovascular disease and total mortality, and instead found protective effects against stroke. Whole fat dairy, unprocessed meat, eggs, and dark chocolate are saturated fatty acid rich foods with a complex matrix that are not associated with increased risk of cardiovascular disease. The totality of available evidence does not support further limiting the intake of such foods. If you are someone who avoids red meat because you think it's bad for you, unfortunately, you have been misled. Beef is great for weight loss because it contains high quality protein and is rich in vitamins and minerals. One in particular being CLA, which has been highly associated with weight loss. And those are my top five foods for weight loss. And now I am going to give you my worst three. Number one is pop. I know I'm going to get some comments about calling it pop, but I'm Canadian and that's what it's called. But pop, soft drinks, soda pop, whatever you want to call it, and other sugar-sweetened beverages are so detrimental when it comes to weight loss. 
Going back to the protein to energy ratio, these foods contain zero protein and are almost entirely, if not entirely, carbohydrates. These drinks do not make you feel full, so you don't end up eating any less food when you consume them. They do not contain any nutrition and they have been strongly associated with weight gain. And the fact that pop isn't even really a food is another reason it leads to weight gain. Your brain does not register it in the same way it does actual food. Number two is potato chips. This one should not come as a surprise to anyone. I am sure we have all experienced opening a bag of potato chips and eating way, way too many. But why is it that these foods do not seem to fill us up in the way that other foods do, even though they are calorically dense? Yes, part of this is the protein to energy ratio we have spoken about a lot already, but the other part is that these foods have been made to be hyper palatable. Hyper palatability happens when foods are high in both carbs and fat, making them extremely tasty. This is of course the case with potato chips. They are high in carbs and fat with next to no protein. Foods found in nature rarely contain this combination. Animal foods are usually high in protein and fat with next to no carbs and plant foods are usually high in either carbs or fat with next to no protein. Nuts are the one exception to this, but when we consider the amount of nuts our ancestors ate, it was an extremely small percentage of their diet. And finally, we have bread and other wheat-based products. And I mean all types of bread, whole grain, whole wheat, white. We're also talking cereal, granola bars, crackers, Again, even if they are whole grain or labeled as healthy, these foods are not good for weight loss. They are low in protein, low in nutrients, but high in energy. Now, the one potentially good quality about bread is the fiber, which can help with satiety. But I think that when we look at the big picture, you are way better off choosing other foods and skipping the bread entirely. Even other high carbohydrate foods, such as potatoes, are going to benefit you more than bread will. Anyways guys, that is all I have for you today. Let me know in the comment section down below if there was any one food that you found particularly beneficial in your weight loss journey. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my video on the top five collagen rich foods that can be beneficial for your hair and skin. You can check it out here. If you wanna catch up on my most recent upload, you can click here. And if you're interested in starting a keto or carnivore diet, you can check out my coaching programs here. Thanks again, guys. I'll see you next time. Bye.